Hi everyone, it's Aaron here at Zero to Fit Pro. Uh, so today we've got a special guest uh, of Shane the Nuge, Quentin Tarantino <laughs> <laughs> Nugent's on. Uh, <laughs> and he's going to give us uh, all things around uh, nutrition, his business as well, what he's doing, uh, and hopefully give um, all PTs a, a great little insight into how to deal with growing a business, how to deal with adding nutrition into that and, and working well with clients as well. So you want to take a few seconds, mate, and introduce yourself. Yeah, definitely. So are we going with the like film production business here or are we going with the, is it, is, want... it's the nutrition one, isn't it? That we're yeah, not, yeah, not the pornography one. Yeah, not that one. <laughs> no, either. no, no. Okay, cool. <laughs> Come on. Bloody Quentin. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah, so yeah, obviously I'm, I'm Shane, as, as you just did. Um, I own the company uh, SJN Nutrition. Uh, we've been trading for it's coming up to five years. I need to. I'm so rubbish with dates and birthdays and everything. I'm like, I don't even know how long we've been trading, but I'm sure it's coming up to about five years now. Um, and yeah, so we we basically help thousands of people all all over the world um, with their nutrition. So the clients get supported by our our products and systems and our subscriptions, which basically we we partner up with different fit pros all over the world, so that we can work with their clients and. It works really well for everybody because obviously we're using our, our experts, or I'd like to think expertise. We had this chat just before we jumped on, but you know, our, our expertise gets utilized and obviously the the PT doesn't have to do the nutrition themselves in a world where we don't know what the right thing to say is and recommend and advise and how do you take clients through a step by step logical system so that all your clients can learn how to do this themselves and set them up for life rather than just handing them a meal plan, for example. Uh, we just we just do all that stuff for them basically so it's good for their business good for the client as well and obviously results wise and then good for us because we get we get to sort of fulfill our company vision and stuff like that so um but yeah we'll go into a few bits and pieces in a bit more detail i've, I've no doubt but in a nutshell that's me yeah <laughs> brilliant because yeah that is a it's a major thing i remember when i first started as a pt i would literally say my knowledge of nutrition post qualification was pretty low like yeah. so, you know to someone ask you a question and it would be that old school favor of well you shouldn't be eating carbs and blah blah and luckily nowadays that's like a huge like everyone knows now i think i feel yeah like, you know i think education's got a lot better but again th this is the thing as well like uh, you know it depends what you want to do with your business and what you what your role is within that business because you know if you want to do the nutrition then go and do qualifications you need to you need to become qualified it's a, it's an incredibly in-depth scientific subject it isn't just working out macros and protein and stuff it's much more than that um you know even even just like you know there's, there's experts that have studied gut health or like like even more specific stuff that, that than that like caffeine or something and, and it, and it helps and it, it assists with a million things or doesn't assist and is detrimental to a million other things you need to so there's so much stuff to learn out there. So we can't just do a weekend course or something and do. So if you want to do the nutrition yourself, like take it seriously, go all in on it. But then also there's this whole, you know, it's just a weird industry, the PT industry and, and fitness, fit, fit pros in general, because, you know, nobody really uh, approaches the, the nutrition matter because it's not a protected term. Anybody can just do a weekend course and call themselves a nutritionist. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how we should do things. So we, we're here to help anybody. Basically, if you want it taken care of for you, we can do that. And then if you want to do it yourself, you know, definitely go and study up, swat up on it 100%. So everybody can be sorted either way now, whereas that option wasn't really available in, in the industry in general, apart from meal plans and recipes to share with clients and things like that and done for you, stuff like that. It doesn't, there's no real massively educational help them for life type stuff and, and done for you stuff. That's, that's why we do what we do, basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So with the education side, obviously that's going to give them more of a long-term approach, doesn't it? So they, they understand why they're actually doing something, you know, and this is, you know, I, I love Joe Wicks and the way he, you know, makes a positive impact in the world. But one thing that's missing through, through giving people meal ideas and this sort of thing is they don't understand why they're losing weight or, you know, they just thought I see eat this meal, I lose weight. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a quick fix sort of that sort of idea, isn't it? Without a doubt. And, and I think this is the thing, I'm not saying what we do is correct and everybody else is incorrect. I'm not saying that for one minute, but because everybody has their place along that spectrum. So, you know, if you, if you want to just like a, 
a quick meal plan or a quick like um you know batch of recipes or something like that or whatever each month that's fantastically valuable by the way like you can still you know keep your clients inspired with with that sort of stuff which is brill and like i said it does have its place but then you know someone like joe wicks comes along he probably does a bit more education but it's still not like helping them understand from an evidence-based perspective for the rest of their lives on how to do this so and but but is it joe wicks's job to do that because i don't think it is i think it's his job to to do what he's doing very well right now and and, and have a general massive positive impact on the uk and probably globally but certainly the uk um you know that he's helped more people than than you or i probably combined in in, yeah. in in our whole lifetime he's done that in a month so you know he's doing all right as 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 far as like is he giving a positive impact but does he have to solve the problem of being overweight long term for life with people i don't think so you know and i think that you know people like joe and, and not just him but other people to get a bit of a, a bad rap a bit of a bit of stick and stuff and and it's not really their job to do that whereas somebody like us like me and and, and my team of nutritionists you know incredibly well qualified like that's our life like our complete life is dedicated to that um to the point where i'm still studying right now as in like i'm doing a phd part-time imminently because i don't want to give up on learning more about an incredibly in-depth topic which is nutrition and the millions of topics that go underneath that umbrella term so like it is actually our job to be more um helping people long term because it just it doesn't make sense for us to do a meal plan it makes sense for us to educate people in a robust way um interact with the clients and help them step by step each step of the way long term forever basically obviously not help them forever but i mean get set up forever um and and, and of course you know deliver a fantastic service in and around that as well so it's not just about the long term stuff it's you know, there's loads of topics in, in there as well and loads of things for the business and for the client that we need to help with as well. So now everybody's got their, you know, if you want meal plans and recipes, there's people for that. If they, if you want people that to like, some people do just need a Kickstarter, like a six to eight week program that changes their life. And they go, actually, that was incredible. The results I got were phenomenal. Okay, I really want to, I really want to do this forever now. And then they might join, you know, a, a program like like the Fit Pros that we work with to work with us for maybe the next six to twelve, maybe maybe even more months, um, and and be handheld in in that period of time to set them up for life. So again, as I say, I think everybody's got their their, you know, their their play space within that industry. I think. Yeah, I think entirely right. Absolutely, because you work to your strengths, isn't it? And as you further go through business, you start to realise <laughs> actually, I'm I'm pretty crap at this end. Like, why, why should I try um, when I can just get someone else in to take over that role and do it at such a better standard? And if you're thinking yeah. about your clients as well, <clears throat> would you rather give them your half qualified standard or would you rather give them someone who knows what they're talking about and can deliver the best possible service? I totally agree. 100%. And I just, I love topics like these because I love this, the thing, right? So <clears throat> it's very difficult for me to define like which I love more. Is it nutrition, like the science of nutrition and learning or is it business? Cause they're totally different things. And, and again, I think the business edges it a little bit and like nutrition is the vehicle that I choose to have a company, if that makes sense. I've always wanted to be own a business, always. Even since I was little, I was playing like, you know, like theme hospital and stuff. I wasn't playing FIFA. I was like, no, how do I create and build this thing and like and, and Age of Empires and stuff and like, like weird strategy games. So even literally when I was little, I was more interested in stuff like that. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it has genuinely been building stuff and how do I create like an empire of this, that or the other, whatever that looks like. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's why that, that's where we go with that. But now obviously on topics like outsourcing and things, it's really interesting because there's, there's, there's a hundred jobs to do. And if you're a brand new PT in, in the industry that I'm well aware because I had to do this myself. I know I'm not a PT, but it's the same principle. Like I still had to do all of the advertising myself and the marketing and the branding and the posts and the you know social media stuff and the sales calls and the emails and the nutrition stuff and the group calls with my clients and blah, blah, blah. And times that by a hundred. And I had to do all of that stuff. And, and, and no doubt, you know, anybody that's listening to this now, you'll probably be in a similar boat or just before that, maybe coming into the industry or just that maybe you've done this for a year already or something, but in and around there. And, it, and it's important to to sort of, 
at some point gauge what you're you're outstanding at, what you're brilliant at, and what and also what you love doing, and focus on the you know if those two things overlap, that's like your zone that you just need to zone in on completely because you're the best at it and you love it. And let's be fair, you don't want to be you don't set up a company and do stuff you don't want to do. That's 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 the w- weirdest. You might as well get a job, might you? Exactly. That you've left your job to do this. Surely, you know that's the whole the whole inherent point of having a company is you have the freedom to be happy and everything's on your terms and blah blah blah. So, and and again, it, that's a process that doesn't happen. You don't just hand your notice in the next day. You do what you want. Of course not. You actually have to do fifty times more work than at the job, because if you don't, like, somebody has to do it. You know, you can't just go. I didn't have time to do sales calls because I was doing the other forty nine things. Well, you've not made any sales. You've, you can't pay your bills. Like, yeah. but you, you know, you know. So you have to just do them all and spin a million plates. So, but it's it's really interesting, um, definitely. And how to phase yourself out from doing all the stuff to doing a path the stuff maybe, and like you're still loads of stuff you don't want to do, but it's better phasing yourself out. And then maybe after it could be six months or a year or two years or whatever, probably about a year and a half, maybe maybe two years, a, a bit more for me. Maybe a bit more, actually. Maybe two and a half years ish, probably. Where I, hopeless with dates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, <laughs> horrific. I'm just thinking, how, what was it? Yeah, but probably about two and a half years, I'd say, two to two and a half years. And then at that point, I could say, like, you know, at least 80% of the stuff is stuff that has been taken care of by somebody that's way better than me at it. That's, it's not just me not doing stuff. That's not the point. As you quite rightly said, I, if, I was, if I had to coach clients now and do the PT stuff, I'd be horrific. I don't know anything about PTing because I've not done any qualifications. I've not got any experience. I don't know anything. So if I did it myself, I'd have a crap PT section and a world-class nutrition section. It wouldn't work. Yeah. So therefore I'd get and enlist somebody like yourself to go and take care of the PT stuff. And then it brings that up to there. And, and I'm not doing that work, but it's twice as good. It's like, that's the whole point. Like, you know, it's not just about me not doing stuff. That's not the point point is how do you deliver world-class service across the board to your clients if you can do all 10 things world-class i don't know who that is but you know you let me know who you are because i want to know about it but <laughs> like you know you've just got to find the one two three things that you're awesome at and focus on that gradually once you've taken the plunge phase yourself out into into that basically yeah i think that's the main thing that everybody wants really because mm. this is the one thing where people go wrong is they don't think about the impact they're delivering and actually delivering at the very best level. So if you're not like being a PT is actually really easy to get qualified is actually quite easy, but what differentiates you from PT a next to you and PT B in the same gym, you know, everyone can do a training program. Everyone can have a great personality and chat to people. But if you're charging the same price as someone else and you're offering world-class nutrition and a full team of people, Mm. you know, that's what differentiates you from everyone else. But obviously, you know, there's costs involved for that and people get yeah. scared like, Oh, well, if I have to spend a hundred quid a month on having this, do this, or, you know, what, what should, where am I going to get that money from? Well, that pays itself because that client then goes, God, I'm getting the best service ever. And then they compare their PT to the other person's PT. Like, Oh, I don't get any of that. I just get like a PDF. Just jump across. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get a PDF and some funny YouTube video. That's, that's for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah like uh, you know when it comes to it whether you're you've only got like five clients or you've got 200 clients to have that extra service on i think is just you know phenomenal and i've seen the stuff you deliver out for pts and it's you know it's so easy and effectively put into people's lives which is which is fantastic problem though as you're saying with the industry because there's no real oversight you couldn't be a physio right and just go ah, i'm gonna physio pe- i'm gonna help physio people yeah i'll just do it a bit myself for a bit <laughs> i'm gonna be a dentist when i'm just yeah. opening, you know, <laughs> I've, brushed, to- <laughs> I've brushed teeth a few times how hard can it be like <laughs> yeah and so you know the, everyone's got their opinion of how it should be done you know and and so it's, it's not really the the way it should be done is it so as a pt starting the industry what would you feel is the best way they should start implementing nutrition or what, what would you say is the best foundational terms for a PT to get started with it? Again, it really depends because there's loads of different variables at play. There's no real right one way of doing things there because, you know, you could have kids for example, and then, so you're probably a bit more risk averse, you know, you're not going to jump in and go, let's sell the house and jump in. Like you, your kids have got nowhere to live. Like I'd be happy to live in my car if, if it means that at the end, I get this incredible company or something, I'd do that, but that's not okay for my kids and my wife. 
So that's obviously, so that what I'm saying is I respect everybody's variables personally too. Um, so the, th the thing is, we, again, it's, it's like a game of chess almost. It's like, what move do you put first to, to basically make you win? Like, and, and, and you know, it's, I, I think do it, there's loads of stuff that you have to do first yourself. So the sales and things like that, the problem, you know, you have to be good at sales. You have to be. There is selling is in inherently in everything, absolutely everything. So even like my PhD thing, so mine's, mine's a scholarship. So I had to apply with literally over a hundred other applicants to do this scholarship. And there were three places. So I have to sell myself then. And there's no money involved. There's no transactions. It's just selling yourself. Why, why do you deserve this? The exact same thing. So you have to be awesome at selling. You know, business is making more sales than, than overheads and you make a profit. So if you crap at selling, you are, you're dead in the water before you begin. It doesn't matter how this is another thing like and i don't mean any disrespect to anybody here and this applies to me too and my team i don't care how good you are as a nutritionist or a pt it's irrelevant if you can't sell it, you know the, the days are gone of, of like i'm just be good at what you do and they'll come like no they won't because the problem is the the, the shit pt around the corner that's got abs and he's excellent at marketing himself he gets way more sales than you'll ever get and he is 20 times worse than you yeah. at the actual product. That is, I don't like that. I'm not saying that's morally correct or, or, or anything like that because it isn't, but that is life. This is, that is the business world. So, you know, it, it is what it is. So you have to work with that. So number one is definitely get the sales head on hundred percent. I think number two as well is, is we have to, we have to think of things in, in it's, and it's a difficult thing to do when you're starting out things in, uh, in, in value terms, not just cost, because, you know, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. So my brother is, is honestly, he's like a world-class salesperson. Like he's ridiculous. He, he works for um, a delivery company, a, a multi, multi-billion pound delivery company. And he was number one in sales for one of the periods that he works for them, which was probably about two years ago. He was number one out of all the salespeople in the UK. So it was like, he's ridiculously good. And he was like, tw he's only 20 odd years old. Again, date, dates and ages. I don't know what age he is, but anyway. <laughs> so um, this is the thing. So with stuff like that, I'm just thinking, don't get me wrong. I'm excellent at sales. I know that that's, that's something I'm fantastic at, but I'm not world-class like, like, like he is. There's no way I'm, I'm, I'm anywhere going to ever be as good as he is. Like it's, his track record is way better than, than, than mine. It's as simple as that. So he now works for the company. So I'm practicing what we preach here. My own brother is part of the company because for, it, it, although I'm good at sales, it's something that I'm, I'm excellent at it, but I don't enjoy it. So, you know, okay, so you're going to have to do it for a bit because you're excellent at it and, and, and it has to be done. And then the other stuff that, that, you know, you gradually phase out, that sales has to be one of the last there really because you're good at it. So leave that to last to phase out. And then now, like Aaron's involved and he's taking care of that for me. He's literally messaged me today that saying that he's made a sale and he's got another call later on today. And again, I'm, I'm on the podcast with you. So it's, it's like, that's, that's phenomenal stuff for me. Like, I'm so happy with that. But it's not just that. It's like, you know, Aaron has a very big cost because obviously we've got to pay him a full salary for that. So I'm well aware of that. But the thing is, you know, if he makes, if he makes, you know, one sale a week and that's it, just one a week and that's it. So worst, worst case scenario, like a world-class salesperson should be making more than one sale a week. Just let me put that to you. Yeah. So let's just say worst case scenario and that, that did happen one a week. And for over a year, he makes 52 sales. Like what's the average customer lifetime value. So if each customer's, you know, worth a thousand pounds, which is for us is probably in, a, in, in around that, he's made 52,000 pounds for the company in recurring revenue because we do subscriptions. So it's not as though they, you know, we build an extension and that's it. We've got to go and find another extension to build. We are, some of our clients have been with us for like three years. So that one client is actually worth 3000 because they're with us on average for three years, that particular client. So what I'm saying is like, yes, it's an overhead and there has to be a right time to do that. I couldn't have done that at the beginning. Can't, I've got no money. Like I can't even afford to pay myself, let alone him and me. So, so yes, there's the cost, but it's, you have to see the value in things you have to, because you're, you're going to be this, 
and, and it is a bit a little bit down to ego sometimes as well where it's like i'm the best at everything like, i don't need help like no you do you're, you're not the best at ads you're not the best at selling and physio and calls and and this that you're not, you're not the best at everything you're the best at two or three things maximum the other 97 things need to be you need help with those things put yeah. a post up about that exact topic the other day right. you need you need help like show me a billionaire that is a one man company like show show me like a, a, an athlete that hasn't had help from a nutritionist or a coach or a physio or or a, a taxi driver to get them to training or whatever like everybody needs help with something to get that world class level of goal achieved so yeah. so get this thing out of your head you are a bottleneck if you think you're you're good at doing everything yourself massively unless yeah. by the way you're happy with that if you if you just want to just you know work for yourself and that's it and that's your goal that's fine too 100 percent. but again there's inherent risks with that because if you're ill like we said just before we jumped on like if you break your leg what happens like there's nobody doing anything there's nothing so if you're happy with that risk and you've got loads saved up or something and that's negated to a certain extent then that's fine too like do what you need to do but you know there's there's pros and cons to both things it just depends on what you're wanting to achieve but hopefully anyway without all this waffling on like what what you should do in the early days you know what what how do you how do you decide what to do hopefully that helps a little bit uh, and on the first steps really but sales definitely first before everything you get good at bloody sales you own a business you have to sell stuff to live and survive and put the food on your table and pay your mortgage or rent or whatever so that's number one and then number two as you get the sales and what you're going to do with these sales like you have to understand the value of things so if you can get a piece of software that can take care of 20 hours of work for you and that software is a hundred pounds a month let's say fantastic like how, how much do you, should you be charging for your service? Is it 10 pounds an hour? Right. Well, out of 20 hours, that's 200 pounds. So you, you, you know, you've saved a hundred pounds in value because you, that software is taking care of the stuff for you. So that's a net value gain. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's and, and extra time and everything to do those extra sales and then grow even more. And that's, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. People stick in a bottleneck thinking that they can only do it themselves. Definitely. And then they, 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 they're stuck. They hit that ceiling and they, and they can't progress when it comes to sales though. And well, actually first every potential new PT I speak to, and I say, why, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to be a PT? It's always a case of, well, I, I've done well. I look great. I feel great. I love fitness. And I just want to impact other people in a positive way and make a difference. That's always the, the bottom line of it. And people like that, just from my own experience, really struggle to sell <clears throat> because it's a yeah. dirty word. They feel like a car salesman. Yeah. And, and I've always said there's a, there's a difference between being really passionate about something and selling it or being a really skillful salesperson. You know, the skillful salesperson's got all the tones you know, when to speak, yeah. when to speak. Um, and people would say, oh, Aaron, you're really good at sales, but I'm not good at sales for that reason. I'm good at yeah. sales because I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm selling and I know the impact and the value that's going to have in someone's life. So I don't feel bad about forcing someone across the line because I know in six months time they go, thank you very much, Aaron. Cause I really, really need the best that. thing I ever did. This is the, this is the, the other thing as well. Like, it's when you know you're not you're not selling like i don't know a radiator or something like it's just it just heats the house that's it like there's a million radiators you can just google one and get that installed right you're literally literally changing people's lives so we've we've had there's one of my clients called um aggie right and and this was when so before we partnered up with companies and fit pros and, and doing all that stuff and schools and blah blah blah, we 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 worked one to one with clients in, in the early days. So, you know, it's that's what what you do. You just get you. I left my job. I have to make some sales, and I just wanted to help people with nutrition. So that's what we did. And one of our one of the first clients is probably in the, the first five clients I'd say we ever had. She's now so she she's she's lost all the weight and and also she's a PT now herself. And she's become qualified and she's therefore helping hundreds of other people now. It's ridiculous. It's like you have, to, how can you, how can you put, so going back to the value thing, how can you quantify that? Like, it, like I said, we're not buying a, a, a car or something. It's like cars are valuable to a point. It gets you from A to B and then how cool you want to look if it's a fancy car. Other than that, it doesn't do anything else. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. If you're changing people's lives, so that can have a knock on effect to, 
to you know a better sex life or something so therefore it, it helps with their relationships and it helps with their confidence at work because the, all they're thinking of is like i'm overweight i'm overweight everybody's looking at me or can they see my lumps and bumps and stuff like you know we've, we've worked with thousands of people we understand exactly what people what are going through people's heads all day every day every single day of every week so you do a presentation at work and it's crap because you're so underconfident whereas you you know you change your your health your, and not just how you look by the way i'm not just focused on that that is important, by the way. We can't ignore that. But at the same time, you know, it, what about, okay, let's start off by boosting your energy levels so you're not like rubbing your eyes and thinking, I just want to go home and sleep at one o'clock every day. Yeah. You know, so we're not even halfway through the day. What's happening here? There's something wrong. Let's get that energy levels going. Better sleep quality, better nutrition, better energy levels go through the roof. And you go and you present like an absolute boss, like get happy days. Yeah, exactly. And, then, yeah. and you know, that might change your work career. It might, change, and again, you can extrapolate as much as you want. So it's, it's very difficult. I don't want to sensationalize things on, on, you know, on, without due credit, but the, the fact of the matter is I have data where literally somebody who has gone over, been, been overweight has changed their life to that much of a level that they actually left their husband as well at the time, which I know that sounds really bad, but it's, 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 it's like nothing to do with us. We didn't, we didn't advise that. But at the same time, they got the confidence to say, do you know what this, I'm, I hate this relationship. And I've been putting up with it because I've seen myself as down here with you. And I'm not that anymore. I'm an incredible person that can do whatever they want. I've already achieved this. So what else can I achieve? And they, they're with somebody else way happier. They've set up their own PT company, left their job and they're impacting hundreds of people's lives. So, what I'm saying is it's not a dirty sales thing. It's, it's your responsibility. It's your duty to, to help these people. It's your duty to understand how to convince people how good you are and how much you can change their lives. You know, if you're selling, selling class A drugs, then fair enough, like don't be doing that. But like you're, you're literally enhancing, completely changing people's lives. I don't understand why people like BTs aren't paid you know, hundreds of thousands a month, let alone this like £10 an hour, £25 an hour thing or whatever that is, like that, it's ridiculous. It, you know, it, yeah. it genuinely is ridiculous how it's quantified, you know. Yeah, this is, yeah, people don't understand the value they're delivering to people. I mean, um, we, like you do, we have a company manifesto and I was just flicking through it the other day and um, you forget about some of the stats of the, of the last couple of years where I believe one in eight people will have suicidal thoughts because they're unhappy about how they look or feel in themselves. And ultimately that can only be changed by training, dieting, or getting some form of control over their, their habits and things, which we as coaches have the ability to do and help them do because people are more adherent to things when they've got guidance, support and accountability. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you just have an impact on actually saving maybe one person's life. You know, I remember years ago having a conversation with this lady <clears throat> and we were selling uh, online subscription, exactly the same training and nutrition for 97 quid a month. I remember going, what's the worst thing that's going to happen to you if you don't make this change? And one of her friends had just died. Um, obesity was a huge thing for her and she had cancer as well. And she goes, I fear I, fear I may die. I said, well, you, you need to come on board and you have to do this. Oh, I'm not quite sure. What are you not sure about? You just told me you're going to know. I remember literally having a go at this woman to make sure she actually did it. And she came on board, she lost three stone and she feels fantastic. And I do not feel guilty or bad about forcing that person to do something because I've saved that woman's life in my eyes. And that's exactly how it is. Definitely. And, and again, it's, it's such a contentious issue because, you know, like, you know, we have core principles of excellence, honesty and integrity for our company and everything we do. So, you know, we should really conduct ourselves well in everything we do if you just do those, those things, basically. And integrity is obviously one of the big things for us. <clears throat> and again, I do understand that it is appropriate for the purpose of that person will not take action initially unless somebody takes action for them. Mm. And again, it is debatable. Where, where does that line get drawn and where, what should you be doing? What shouldn't you be doing? I'm not, you know, we have to address that too. But I know, you know, if, if, if I didn't, for example, with my job to leave my job, obviously, you know, saving your life's totally different. But my experience is like, you know, if you, if, like you said, if you don't leave your job now, what, what's going to happen? Are you going to be in it? And I would still be in that job now. I know I would because I wouldn't have taken business, the business seriously enough because 
I'm one of these people where if, if I'm, if I'm going to lose my house and my family, it'll work. We will make it work 100%. Whereas if, if I, if I, if I, you know, namby pamby about with it and just go, well, well, let's phase ourselves out over a six month period and we'll just drop my hours down at work and increase the business a bit. And like, no, you, that, that business isn't going to become successful because you're not dedicating yourself to it. You're dedicating yourself 10% to it initially. You, you have to dedicate yourself 100% at all times. I'm not saying you can't set up a, a part-time business. I'm just saying this is how I work. I need to go all in on absolutely everything. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's yeah. as simple as that. Absolutely. So, and whereas some people, actually, it's not the right thing to do to just leave your job overnight and phase. You could actually stay financially secure and phase yourself out and create the company. I'm not saying that can't be done either, just for me. So again, like what type of person are you? Like, you know, you. so I, I had to be pushed. I had to be because I was so cautious and I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I've never done anything actually, like this. I actually remember because I was on an event the day after the event that you were on in Bath. <laughs> and I remember someone coming in and going, I'm convinced him to quit his, quit his fucking job. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I never knew that. I never knew you were on the next day. That's incredible. Yeah, so you've, you've literally been there from day one in that case. <laughs> remember literally day it. one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing you write that have the letter on, on Facebook. Yeah, and- yeah. I was like, I, I, that post comes up every single year. <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, like... I, li- I literally handed my notice in that, that next day. So what happened? Again, it was a little bit shitty from the business coach's perspective, to be honest, you know, should that, should that have done ha- happened? I, I don't know. But anyway, it, it turned out really well for me, but he literally wanted me to ring my boss and do it on the phone on stage. And I was like, I'm not doing that on a Saturday, ringing my boss. Up. <laughs> <laughs> like just because just for your inspirational video or something i still got you gotta have respect for people i'm still gonna work my notice this ain't tony robin like, yeah yeah like <laughs> come, come on lads let's 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 do it definitely i'm all in but let's have respect for people too my work was has actually helped me massively so whilst i was doing my master's degree they let me have wednesday mornings off if i made it up elsewhere in the company they didn't let anybody else do that and and i and he wants me to get on the phone and go tell him to stick it and like <laughs> <laughs> no we're not doing that so then i had to send a text to my missus say i'm leaving my job and i was like yeah that's fine i'll do that then if that's you that, that's how i can satisfy you committing whilst i'm on stage then that's fine we'll do that so i did that handed my notes in works my works my um month's notice period and left on fantastic terms and by the way it's a good job i did do that because we're moving into corporate wellness right now so guess the first person we're going to contact Absolutely. You do not mean any bridges where possible. No, ever. Like unless they are just a knobhead, like that's different. But <laughs> yeah. of course, like do you know you've got to stick up for yourself and do what you need to do, that's different. But you know, ninety nine percent of the time you just you can you can still do what you want to do anyway, but be respectful to people, you know. But uh, but anyway, yeah, so you know, th- some people do need a push and I did need that. I did need somebody to go like you know, that bungee jump thing. Of course, everybody thinks they're going to splat on the floor. Every, that's a normal human thing. You're not. You're absolutely not. You need something to push you sometimes. Some people do it themselves and take gradual steps and then jump. That's fine too. But whatever your way of doing it is, like you need to like, just make sure you you do it and fulfill your potential in life. Because, you know, I, again, it's very deep and like thoughtful and all that sort of stuff. And I, I you know, I'm conscious of not being like a, a mindset guru or something here, but like all jokes aside, you know, when you're like 85, 90, however long we're going to live to, and you've literally got that last 10 minutes and like, you know, your best mate or your wife or your kids or something, they're going, did, did you, what did you do with your life? Are you happy? Are you proud of what you achieved? Are you proud of this? If, you, if you're sat there saying no, that you, you have literally just led a pointless life. Like, I, I'm, I'm, honestly, that is, it's like so brutal, but, but, it, it is what it is you, you know you, that can't happen like that can't happen there is a different type of mindset for people who qualify as personal trainers or, or leaders in what they're doing is i couldn't go through life just doing a normal nine five job and just conforming to what's happening um it just doesn't sit right with me and i want to be able to turn around and say to my kids and my grandkids oh this is what i've done and then show a, a positive role model to what they they should be doing and delivering a great impact. So nothing to do with, you know, financially. Yeah, we're we're stable. We earn a good income. We don't need to earn millions of pounds <clears throat> to be happy. We should be able to live our life 
feel really comfortable with what we're delivering and you know congruent with what we're doing and definitely we're happy with that and that's you know that's perfect uh, but some people in this world their success is just to get through and just to survive um and you know if that makes them happy then yeah so be it as you said there's loads of different routes to go down isn't there definitely uh, and as a business owner, we need some people who are actually <laughs> going to sit there and do the job that we give them and say, look, can you, look, this is what I need you to do. And yeah, uh, can you do that, please? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Sweet. Perfect. Um, that, that helps everybody. That, that person, again, it's all about your personal priorities. Like I prioritize making sure that, you know, one of the biggest things is having the choice to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I know that sounds like a big kid going, no, I want it my way. It's not to do with that. It's just a case of like, I don't want, I don't want like a, a business owner to say to me, you, we're, the company's folding. So that therefore he can decide or that company or something else, whatever it is, can decide whether I can pay my mortgage or not. Mm. Like that's not, however, other people are, are actually like, no, I don't want like, you know, or X, Y, and Z. I just want to know that, that, that somebody else can provide a wage for me to be able to pay my mortgage, which is fine. But again, there's inherent risks to both. It's not the perfect way either way. You know, there's there's massive drawbacks for for setting up your own business and having a massive successful business, which everybody you know ideally would that wants to do that should have really or, or aim for. But there's also inherent risk. Like I said, look at what's happening right now. How if you're in a job and you've just been furloughed or or you've you've just been let let go or you, you've got eighty percent that has been dictated to by you. But sorry, but sorry, by somebody else, not by you. The complete opposite, yeah. by somebody else. So so. That's a problem. How do you make more money now? You can't decide. You, you can't, you can't, you know, you, you're just going to go and have to potter about and like, you know, do, do people's gardens or, or, or what, I don't know. You're going to, you know, have to be creative or take a loan out or to go on benefits or something. I, I don't know, you know, what, how do you significant, how can you protect your family and your, and your bills? And, mm. and so for me, it's about like nobody dictates or decides anything for me. And, and again, not in a childish way. It's a case of, you know, if, if, you know, like my son needs some surgery that isn't covered on the NHS, I decide that it's not a problem. It's not, do you get what I mean? It's, it's yeah. like, I, I, it's, it's the, my financial situation is dictating to me whether I get to my son an operation. I am not having that. <laughs> no way. No, yeah. no way. Um, and, and again, that's only an example, of course, a hypothetical situation, but, you know, in full control of everything. So if that's my biggest goal, then I'm going all in. That's it. Whereas if your goal is genuinely just to be chilled and happy, you don't want like, I don't know, you know, two fancy cars. You can just share one average one and you, that's not your thing. Fair enough. Money's not your thing. That like profit isn't your thing. That's fine. You know, just be, just be an outstanding personal trainer and the best in the area so that, you know, no matter what job you go into, you're, you're going to be number. If you, if anybody hears that you've left your job, the companies will be coming after you. You're, you're that good. Like there's nothing wrong with that too. So, you know, just to, as long as like, you know, you're happy is the main thing. Yeah. Again, not to be too mindset -y, but it's pretty much the reason why everybody does everything. So yeah. pretty, <laughs> pretty important. <laughs> yeah. So, like stress, no matter if you're self-employed or employed, and I've been in both roles, it's like, well, you're always going to be stressed at some point. So I'd rather, me personally, would rather be stressed on my own terms of what I'm stressed about, knowing I have control over yeah. what the outcome is going to be. If I work harder, if I get better at doing more sales, my stress diminishes. You know, my boss doesn't dictate how stressed I am. Yeah. When you were saying about, you know, either going all in or gradually, you know, breaking down and then going in, Either way, that stressful point is going to appear. There's always going to be that fear of, oh, it's all going to go tits up here. Like that's always yeah. going to be there, no matter if you set up a nice stable amount of income and then you decide to change because as a PT, you still think all oh, my clients could leave me tomorrow and I've got nothing, you know, yeah. so you might as well. I always feel you might as well just, if you've decided, just go for it because you can always get a job again. It's not yeah. hard, is it? Yeah, uh, don't, don't, don't forget, it can, it can go tits up and you choose to get to the, the safe option. You get you get fired or the company goes down the pan. It's like, well, you may as well have gone for it then. Yeah, you're, you're in the same position anyway, you know. Um, so you know, th th you you have to weigh up all angles. And again, this is the scientific part of me coming up. You you reason both sides of the argument, and every aspect of both sides of the argument come to a reasonable conclusion. Like, don't just say, "Oh, it's too risky." No, it's like, no, but so what's the upside of the risk? Have you considered that? What happens if you risk it and it goes well? You know, this is, this is the thing. So one of, one of the, 
one of the things that like annoyed me so much, you know, when I was, you know, when I'd handed my notice in and I was working, it was an amazing music company and they, they literally put music in stores. That's what, that's what I did. I put the music into the database. So you know, you walk in like H and M or B and Q or something, there's music in the background. Yeah. That store does that for companies worldwide. So it's a really cool job actually to have whilst it was basically paying for my master's degree. That's it. Like I didn't want anything other than to just do that. Um, and whilst I handed my notice in, in the tea room, everybody said the same thing. It's like, well, at least you've got your qualifications. If it doesn't go well, at least you've got your qualifications. I'm like, yes, I know that. Why is, out of 100 people who have said that, why is it not 50% of people saying, oh, well, at least if it doesn't go well, this is what happens. Why aren't the other 50% saying, well, at least if it goes really well, you'll, you'll do this, that, and the other. Like, why, why is that the case? <laughs> and again, this, this is how humans think, the, the shit stuff all the time. And, yeah. and that's how your brain's conditioned to work, which is fine. It shouldn't be any different. It is what it is. But you can manually override that and start thinking, no, actively think about all options. And if it isn't a good thing for you to do, that's fine too. Nothing wrong with that. But as long as you don't come to that conclusion for a good reason and not just, oh, it's too risky and that's it. Or like, you know, I don't want to fail in front of my dad or something. Like, what well, if I risk it and it fails and my dad says, I told, I told you so. So you're, you're not risking fulfilling your potential in life because of your dad's opinion of you. Mental. Get, just get in and do it anyway. Just switch, you know, don't worry about other people. So, you know, that, that's another thing as well, you know, to be con- considering. But again, just be... I'm not trying to force people to leave their jobs either. <laughs> just be cautious both sides, definitely. Be responsible. Definitely yeah. Be responsible. Do the right thing, whatever the right thing is, you know. Yeah. I mean, mindset. I know, <clears throat> I know none of us really are qualified to be you know, delivering any mindset yeah. stuff. But a lot of the time with, when it comes to even clients and nutrition, you have to, this is one thing I like really struggle with is how, how would you sort of deal with t- training people nutritionally on a grand scale, but trying to individually mindfully like help them through it. So, you know, some people might go, all right, I can just do X, Y, and Z dead simply. And some people might go, oh, I need to phase that bit in and take their yeah. time because they've had trouble with dieting in the past and they've got an endless or eating disorder or, you know, or anything like that. So, you know, how do you sort of tackle that? So again, with nutrition, it's, it's inherently like in, intertwined with mindset as well. You know, it's, it's like, you know, if you think of like your favorite meal, that will probably take you back to a, an amazing memory that you had with your family on your 18th birthday or something. It's like, do you get what I mean? It's that your emotions are tied into nutrition and food if I have pizza, it takes me back to like being on holiday in Italy with my, my, my wife or something, or do you get what I mean? Or like have, having a drink, like alcohol in the garden. And it makes you think, Oh, I can remember my best mate stag do. That was such a good weekend, blah, blah, blah. So it's not just nutrition and science. It is, it affects everything. And, and, and the mindset affects the nutrition The nutrition affects the mindset, the training affects the nutrition it's like a, a dynamic thing. It's, it, 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 so you can't just do, do nutrition and not train because you're going to lose the weight and your body's going to look not how you want it. So you might have dropped a number on a scale, but you need the training to make you look incredible and be at that healthy weight or whatever. Um, but you also need to be in the zone mentally to be able to take any action. So it's like, well, what? So, you know, you can't not address it because you know it's it's like selling a car and just selling the engine or something it's like well no we need everything can have the whole thing please um so how we do it is we we just think like you know everything every piece of advice that we give has to be safe um effective and and sustainable so the sustainable things probably doesn't apply too much to the mindset maybe and and so but safe and effective definitely so is it actually going to cause an effect is it actually going to benefit anybody so it has to be effective. And then obviously, you know, is it safe? Like, you know, could we, um, it, you know, if that person's suicidal or something, like, is it our place as a nutritionist to give them mindset advice? The answer is categorically no. You, no. you stay away from that and that's, that's final. Um, even if you, this, this is the problem because I know in the real world, sometimes you can help people still. So if you just ignore the right thing to do on paper, you just go, no, but I could still help them and inspire them to do this, that and the other that's a difficult one. And I do get when people are tempted to do that, but we don't, that's, that's just not our job. And we're confident that we've done the right thing in, in stuff like that. Now there's, it's a spectrum. So, you know, a bit further back on that spectrum, can you get involved in a few bits and pieces it's a bit of a gray area, but okay. As long as you've got very, very good reason to, and then there's obviously the complete opposite side of the spectrum where it's like, of course you can try and inspire somebody or motivate somebody or like, you know, you, you, you know, try and, 
get their mind in, in the zone in, in terms of meal planning, for example. It's like, I don't want to do it. It's like, what, you don't want to have the best week of your life in the next week coming and get a fantastic result and literally like give yeah, a virtual high five to your trainer and your nutritionist. And then we share those results. And because of your results, you've inspired hundreds of other people to do the same. Right. What do you mean you don't want a meal plan? Right. Go, you go again. You do this because this is what you signed up for. Sometimes you have to do stuff you don't want to do. That's it. Like, get on with it. <laughs> so, so there's the, you know, yes, there's stuff like that. Of course you can have that discussion, but it's just, if it's not going to be safe, I think, um, of course, if it's not going to be effective, don't get involved, of course, but you know, I'm referring more to like in nutrition terms, like juice diets and things. And it's just, you know, we don't need to be doing stuff like that as, as adults in this day and age. So, you know, um, but yeah, so I, th- I think it's, this, it is a difficult one, but again, it's the same as nutrition. You know, when does a PT get involved with nutrition? Of course you can say, this is how I eat or like, of course you can say, you know, chicken's a source of protein. Like, it's not going to, you're not, not allowed to say that. That's, that would be mental. Like, you know, it, it, you can't have that. Even if nutritionist does become a fully professionally protected term you, you still can't not have access to that level of help yeah um but yeah it, obviously the further up that spectrum you go the more and more inherent risk you get and you just have to be happy that, that you've given the right advice and also done it safely really so again it's not a very specific answer but that's how we approach things and just take everything on a case by case scenario and, and and you know people have asked me for help and they genuinely are having serious problems at home and mental turmoil and, and I've had to say look like I know you you like me and my work and how we do things and I'm very positive with everything everything's optimistic and blah blah and I know why you want help with that but it's not my place to help you and I can't help you with this you need to see somebody who's suitably qualified to the level in the mindset or psychological or psychiatric side of thing or whatever side of things to the same level we are in nutrition you know, we can't be doing somebody else's expertise because we're not experts at it. So yeah, I mean, we tell all our new PTs, you know, stick to what you can do yourself within the realms of your qualification. You know, so you know, you help people on on this side. That's what you do, and be really good at doing that. But as soon as you spread your field out to try and help everyone, you you don't become any good. You spread too far, too thinly, and you crap for everybody. And, and you dilute your business. Yeah. Like, you know, that you, you, you know, you have to think of it like everything I do, every single action that I take, it's like, is this, is me helping getting in, branching out into this other area over here? Is that going to help me still carry on putting food on my little boy's plate? Because like, you know, I know it sounds stupid, but if you think of it like that, you take stuff seriously. So, you know, there's loads of stuff that we could do to make more money or something, but it, it's like, you know, do I want to be working a hundred hours a day and never see my kids grow up? So you've got all this money, but you've not seen your kids grow up. Mm-hmm. So that's for me, that's a no, I can't do that. That's not okay. You know, um, you know, so, your point about goals though, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Clients, you, you, yeah, someone wants to lose weight, <clears throat> but what does that actually look like to you? And you put a post on about it, I think yesterday, didn't you? Um, where what's, what's that goal look like to you? Why do you want to achieve it? What you know? Yeah, yeah. What's be better about your life? So I, I remember the post. Now. <laughs> I was just thinking <laughs> yeah. which one. I put like five or six up a day, so I'm like, I can't <laughs> yeah. remember what I said. <laughs> oh, no. It was it was a more serious one, not like just a non yeah. <laughs> pineapple on pizza post. God <laughs> Almighty! Yeah, so it was, and this is definitely what we we always instill in people is to understand why they're actually doing it. So when they they've got something to celebrate when they get there, uh, so they're, they're always more happier. They've got more direction, more um, accountability as well and they're not endlessly chasing a number on a scale which keeps them in this loop um because there are i've got some clients who are you know 55 60 for decades have been cycling through their weight and they're never happy until they get to 60 kilos i need to be 60 kilos yeah but you're in the best shape of your life you're fitter than ever your knees are not hurting you anymore. You look fantastic. Was that not what you wanted? Yeah, but I needed to be 60 kilos. I know, 65 kilos, but absolutely quality lean muscle tissue that makes you stronger, helps with endothelial function, heart, heart, you know, heart problems, risks associated with cardiovascular disease. Oh, so that's irrelevant, but the number's relevant. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crazy, you know. And, and I think, you know, as PTs start, they worry about like trying to get everything specific, but looking at every individual number and really, you know, even though we help people on a mass, we still want to help people individually. And you need to make sure you get that person's individual why. As, you know, to, and even, I've even had people on, which is 
you know, they want to feel good, but they want to be that role model for their kids. So their kids don't have, and no, in this day and age with like social media and things, um, you know, kids have a real bad problem with body shape and image and yeah. stuff like that. And, know, so and, and we didn't have that growing up. Do you know, you, you did a bit like, you know, obviously if somebody's a bit leaner than you and, and, you know, you're playing Sunday league football or something, the changing rooms and you've got a little bit of moves going on. Somebody else has like got a proper alpha male with abs. There's a bit of that goes on, but like, like you say, kids get that thousand times a day if they're not careful. Yeah. You know, and I think as parents, you know, you and me, it's, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that we deliver a great role model. You know, we don't, we don't deal with juicing diets or things like that because it's not sustainable. And I know you mentioned it may not touch on the mindset side, but because it isn't sustainable, it gives people a poor concept of food and it gives them a, yeah. you know, their kids are put Oh, my mum just drinks this juice diet. And therefore, um, you know, she, that's, that's how she looks good. And that's how, and that's, that's I what I need to do. And it's like, well, I don't think so. You know, you're giving your kid an issue later down the line, I feel. Again, but, and again, it's like, you know, it, it just takes a bit of time to get the, to help the client get their mind around it as well. Because like you say, social media and, and the news and, and, and gossip columns and, and, you know, daytime programs, you know, there was, what, what was it today that I heard? It was, uh, it's Adele. Diet, a diet secrets of Adele. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't hear, but I wanted to watch what it was. But what was it? I think she's done some sort of like, I don't know if it was like a vegan type diet, but a moderated vegan diet where they had, food, you know, extra animal products in there, just bits and pieces uh, or something like that. And she's lost this weight. And it's like, you know, it's not, it's not the point what Adele did. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, Adele, Adele's a multi, multi millionaire. She probably, you know, had a personal trainer come to her house four times a day or something like it's not, don't forget about what everybody else is doing. It doesn't even matter what Jeanette in the office two meters away from you is doing because they might be doing a ketogenic diet and that would be the worst thing in the world for you. Somebody told me to go on a low carb diet, I'd throw a chair at them because I can't have pizza. <laughs> yeah. Straight, I'm not doing it. So don't, I don't care what you're doing. I want what's best for me. No matter how strange that looks to everybody else, I'm not interested in anybody else's opinion. And that's, that's fine. You know, as soon as you get to that way of thinking and also that, that it's long term, the, me the media is re so responsible for, for people's shitty relationship with, with a long-term and difficult process that, by the way, I, like my research is in weight loss. My, my research is literally with it. Can a vegan diet be used as an intervention for people who are overweight and, and obese? I'm not, I'm not a vegan or anything. We're just like in investigating that. That's our topic. Even me, who's dedicated my life to this, basically, on the business and the research side of things and education side of things, we still don't have an answer. So, so, so you know, just to see Adele with a before and after picture doesn't go, oh, that's what the world should do. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. You're trivializing a very complex, multifaceted problem. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you know, we need, we need to treat it as so for you to therefore conquer it. You know, if you're trying to, if you're trying to, you know, climb a mountain like you have to treat the problem as climbing a mountain and do it in phases and like how do you get to base camp how do you get to camp two and blah and it's a progressive journey that needs assessing as such in stages along that, that that period so if you treat it like a juice cleanse then you will get juice cleanse results <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it you, you as in none <laughs> you might <laughs> by the way you, you might lose a bit of weight today but again, goes back to, are you wanting to get a number on some scales lower or are you want to change your life? Because there's sometimes different things. Because I, I'm, you know, not to put it in too gruesome terms, but of course you can put some juice in, 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 in your body and go to the toilet a lot for the next couple of days and lose, you know, two, three kilograms or something or whatever. Of course you can do that. It's not about the number. It's a bit about the number because you can't, you know, you lose weight, you are going to lose weight, obviously. But it's not about that specific that's not the goal the goal is health and strength and fitness and be a role model and like so whatever range not number range that falls in for, for you then fantastic like aim, aim for somewhere in in there it's not like seriously what are, so you're seeing 60 kilograms so is 60.5 kilograms a problem for you yeah that's what or, 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 or 59.5 like so you go, oh crap i need to put a pound on 
Like, why? <laughs> what we did, why? It I'm unhealthy now. I'm below 60. Yeah, <laughs> you, were, you, were hel- you were healthy 15 minutes ago, but you just, you had, you had like that cup of tea, which tipped you over on the weight scale. <laughs> Mental, like you don't, you don't have to do that. And I think, you know, when you're talking to clients as well and you find out their goal, at the end of it, they want to be able to enjoy themselves, be full of energy, look great. They want to be able to eat normally and do all these things. But if you have to say, right, you need to drink this juice cleanse every day and yeah. that's all you can have and you will stay at 60 kilos, I think some people would say, ah, oh, no, nah, I'm all right, actually. <laughs> I'll do it for a week, yeah. though. I'll do it for a week. <laughs> so. Again, you know, what, for, for my... Um master's research basically i worked with a boxer and he literally did have to lose weight as in he had to make a weight so he could go in the ring and punch the other guy in the head harder than he's hitting him so obviously there's other physiological factors we need to take care of as well at the same time so yes he does need to lose weight that's that's fine some people do need to lose weight but you're you're not a professional boxer so you will probably lose weight as part of the process, but whilst you're becoming a role model to your kids and avoiding the, the risk of type 2 diabetes that runs in your family and also being alive so that you can provide for your family, which is pretty important, I dare say. What, what will your family going to do if you lead an unhealthy life and, and have a heart attack as, as a result and die? That, and again, it's very, very... I, I don't want to like say sensationalised stuff for no reason. That is a genuine... you know. Like 67% of the UK is classed as overbe- o- overbeast, overweight or obese. Yeah. 67%. So it's a genuine problem. We need to assess it as such. What are the disadvantages of being obese? Early onset of heart attack risk, death, mor- morbidity. Like it, it, it's, it's it, you, know, you know, we have to treat it as, as such. That's you can't skim of, around the issue. No. Be, as you say in your core values, you've got to be honest with people. You yeah. Know? Otherwise, they just, you know, they get like, a, oh, it's going to be OK. Yeah. No, it's not going to be OK if you carry yeah. on. But again, so, you know, I don't don't get me wrong. Like, you know, uh, it, it's difficult. So I've had my uh, 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 publication deadline recently and it came out of the blue out of nowhere. So I have had to literally, uh, you know, as, as we chatted about earlier, in, in 24 hours, I worked for 23 of those, uh, sorry, 22 of those hours. And it was, it was just ridiculous. It was every. I literally went to sleep for a couple of hours or a few hours or whatever it was, and got straight back to it. Like, yes, that's that's crap, but it's like you've you've got, to, you know, you have to treat the problem as 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 it need as it needs. If I tried to do this inspirational, oh, I'll probably just get it done in a couple of hours. You're not going to meet your. De- you're not going. I'm not. I wouldn't have met that deadline. You have to treat it like a mountain to overcome the hurdles that a mountain you face along the way of you know traversing a mountain or whatever. Like. You can't tri- stop trivialising things. <laughs> I guess that's don't listen thing. to the media at all. Just don't listen to them. You know when you've got client like so, I've got a client who's uh, gone to Everest, <clears throat> him and his wife, and uh, when they tell you the story, it's the story of every point up that mountain. Yeah, yeah. And no, uh, and it's you know this has happened here, all the the ice walls and all this sort of stuff, and you're listening, and that's the bit you love. Uh, they didn't summit Everest. But, you know, everything builds up to that point of summiting, summiting Everest. Yeah. Um, but actually, the summit is just the summit. And the rest is where all that, you know, magic is. You're like, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And it's, so it, it's like it can be an incredible journey, not just an incredible result. Yeah. yeah. And as a PT, you've, you've, or a nutritionist or a dietitian or whatever, you've got the ability to have that, to design that journey for someone and make it, like, amazing for them to actually change their world and say actually yeah this is the way to do it now doesn't matter what karen says up the road you know like yeah i remember and, seeing and- i remember seeing a post about someone who i can't remember I, i'm probably going to ruin it now because they didn't really put it properly but they shave you know dave up the road cuts hair he cuts everyone's hair the same it's like quarantine cut now you know but everyone's <laughs> not happy because i didn't want the hair cut like that so i'm still not happy <laughs> same thing with diets isn't it oh well Steve, the diet, the, the PT does a kind of genetic, ketogenic diet and that's what everyone does, but people still aren't happy with it. So I know. Yeah. But uh, you know, no, nobody, not everybody needs the same pair of shoes or the same car to get to where people have preferences and different needs. So you have to personalize things for people. It's as simple as that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's okay. The, the, the thing, the, one of the big things is it's okay to be, it's incredibly important to focus on the client side of things and fulfill in their, 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 goals and what they want to achieve and and genuinely changing their lives and being impactful to that level that's important 
But the other thing is as well, is make sure that when you're running the business that, that creates that result, that your life isn't negatively impacted. You know, it's, it's ridiculous that, you know, you, you know, okay, so let's say, let's say if I haven't gone to the gym in a year because I literally haven't got time because I'm helping people go to the gym. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you, you need to look after yourself too. And also that means financially and the time you spend at work and factoring in, you know, if I, if I wasn't, if I was single now and I, I wasn't married and I didn't have a little boy and another little boy on the way and a pregnant wife right now and that needs help and stuff, I probably wouldn't be living here. I probably would be like just... I don't know, in a penthouse or something in London and just working every day and every hour. And it's not because it's work. It's just because it's like, well, that's what I would fill my time with. And yeah. I don't, I don't get this time off thing at all. You know, it, it's like, I, you know, if I need time off, I'll have it. That's fine. <laughs> but I, I don't need it. I don't need, you know, just cause everybody goes on holiday once a year. It's like, well, what if I want to go on holiday six times or none? Like I'll just choose what I want to. And why do we work weekends? Uh, sorry, not work weekends. Why is that? It's just another day. Like, it, by the way, if you don't want to wait weekends, that's fine too. I'm just saying like, you know, so, you know, my look, my life would like look totally different and my priorities would be different, but I've set the company up in a way that works around how I want things done. Jade is literally going to give birth to my second child in two and a half months ish. That is happening whether I like it or not. So if my business isn't set up to work around that, I'm, have a problem <laughs> should we say <laughs> so that is not so again it's it's like that leaving your job thing it's like you know i left my job the situation is here solve it you have to solve it so if you don't solve it you're not going to be there for your wife and your son or or or, or the business is going to implode when you just go no nope, sorry i'm taking a week off to i need i need to be there for my family or three weeks or, or whatever's needed the business dies then like, so, so it's like, you know, you, you can't have that. You have to solve that problem and also have it your way as well as the client's way. Not just this noble thing of, I work 17 hours a minute just to make sure that my clients are helped. It's like, well, that's very good. You're, you're literally leading a life that you wouldn't advise to your clients. Yeah. That's mental. So, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, bad at, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that people that, who start up, like I said, you have to do loads of work at the end. I get that. That's you have to do what you have to do, but at some point you have to have the balance for you and for them, and not just for them. You know, from a business sense. So that's that's one of the biggest things that that you know, and and it inspires you to do more and better work. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so you can help think, more people doing it that way. Not. <clears throat> I think you, you you're definitely right, but you have to don't you have to go through the trenches of that. You have to yeah. be aware that actually oh yeah, actually, this is wrong. I shouldn't be doing it like this. But the quicker you can be aware of it and change it, the, the better. But I feel like you still have to go through it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. But you know you, you ha you know, you have to fall off your bike to go, that was crap. I'm really going to try much harder to not fall off my bike because it was sore. Like, if it's not sore, you're not going to be motivated to not do that again. Yeah. So, so if, you know, if, you, if you set up a business and it fails, that motivates you more to do things better and differently the second time. It's not, you know, it's, it, you know, the, the, the challenges and the problems are inherent part of the journey. So avoiding problems, obviously it's a good thing to do. Of course, don't like just have loads of problems. Don't do, do that. But the challenges that you have and solving them and, the, and what you learn from that, you know, like that. I, so when we were working with clients where I had about 40, 40 something clients, I think there was that I was working with either one-to-one -one or in a group setting and a PT messaged me who we had a similar business mentor and said hey buddy do you fancy like drop it we'll, we'll pay you and we'll just drop drop in our group you could be our nutrition advisor and they could just add, ask you questions and stuff and like that's literally how my business started and how it is today one message from that one person and then the problem i had then was i said yeah of course definitely how many clients have you got 60 i was like but i'm working every hour of every day for 40 so you want me to do two days worth of work in a day? But so the point is, you've just got to question everything. You, 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 people sit there and go, it's, it's impossible to help 100 clients. It's impossible. Tesco's is, Tesco's is helping <coughs> millions of people a day get food to their door. So it is possible to do stuff en masse. It is possible. So, so how did they do that? And that, what's the nutrition version of that? And that's literally what we do now. Like that's literally what we do now. So, you know, 
you, you know, just, just think about every single problem as, as it comes up and try and solve it as, as best you can. That 100%. It's got to be done, you know. Yeah, that's it. And no matter where you are on your journey, whether you train people one-to-one or whatever, there's always going to be a problem and you just have to find a solution. You just, you just have to. Yeah. Um, it's just and part of the problems are part of that journey. It's like, it's completely necessary to have that. If you have it easy the whole time, you're not learning anything like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've got a big problem coming soon if you haven't had any problems yet. So <laughs> I don't know what you've been doing. What, what have you been <laughs> doing? We've all got one now, haven't we? <laughs> well, you don't, you're doing all right. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just <doing it> all. <laughs> So do you have any, like, it's a hard question this for people, but do you have a, uh, any pearls, like a one pearl of wisdom you would give a, a brand new trainer to the industry or anyone who's starting their fitness business up? What, what pearl of wisdom would you give? Definitely. So be as selfish as physically possible, right? So that, I know that sounds very horrible, but it's not. It is not selfish to be selfish. The, the definition of selfish is a negative thing and it's just, it shouldn't be because this is the problem we, we have, like it relates to what I've said already. If you're creating a business, you want it, but it's not, it's generally probably not because you want a Maserati or something, you know, it's not because of that. That's like a client saying, I want to be 60 kilograms, like we said earlier on. Look, if you know, if you have the Maserati or not, it's not the point. The point is that you want to put a roof over your family's head. It's also, it's not just that either. So for me, it's like, you know, as my kids grow up and they go, oh, I'm so scared of like, you know, becoming a manager at Tesco's or being a lawyer or what, I don't, I don't, whatever they want to do or being a footballer or something. Or like, I, I need them to see that I've completely and utterly dedicated my life and I have to jumping off cliffs to seek to test things and make sure so that they're set up properly and they need to do the same for their kids. Do you get what I mean? So we're not, we're not doing this, this bullshit. We're just going to die and have a crap life thing. That's absolutely not going to happen. And everybody, you know, there's lots of people out there that are moaning at external things and pointing the finger outwards instead of like, no, you should be, you should be taking the bull by the horn. See, it's nothing to do with Tesco's not paying enough money. It's because you chose to accept a job at that hourly rate. You can't moan now you've accepted that was your fault. You know, it's as simple as that. So be selfish and just think, you know, if you set, if you clearly define your goals and have, have it very specific, like, you know, for my son, for my second son on the way, my wife, like all the those important things, you know, working till stupid o'clock at night is just, it's not easy, but it's like, you, you do get it done though, because it's a genuinely, it's, it's, I'm doing this for me and my wife and my kids. I'm not doing this just because I want a, a car. It's good. Well, you could just not have the car. Brilliant. So there you don't do it then. Yeah. yeah, do you get what I'm saying? Because it's because yeah, yeah. it's, it's a crap goal. It's like it's not a, a serious goal. So yeah, I think the biggest thing is like if you could have, if you could like, uh, you know, <laughs> again not to be inspirational guruy, but genuinely, this is like you, you, know, you need to factor this in. What does your day look like, and how do you want your day to look in in a year's time or three or five years time? If you're starting out, or everybody's different, but like, how does that look? So for me like I want, I want to build my own house because it's like me being a man and like building my castle for my family and protecting them. And that's our little fort that I've created. And I've made the business do that to, to, to get to that result. And also inspired my kids along the way and taken the hard route and done a PhD and run a company at the same time. And people don't generally do that. But what I'm saying is I've taken the hard route and displayed that myself for my son to grow up because he'll learn from that and be inspired by that. So when things get difficult, it's like, yeah, but look what, look what dad did. Like, this is a tenth of that. So you can definitely do that. Whereas if I hadn't have done what I do now, he'd have probably left it there and gone, that's too difficult. I'm not going to do that, whatever it is. Whether it's an exam or, you know, asking a woman out or something. I don't know, what, whatever it is. Like, he's, he's inspired to be able to do that stuff. So for me, that actually, that literally has a domino effect for everything. Absolutely everything. You know, it, you know, if, if somebody asks me to do a project, like a new sale comes in, they say, do you want to do this? Do you want to get involved with this project? And they say, but you're going to have to dedicate yourself for six months and not see your family because we're flying you out to Florida. No, I don't care. You, you could pay me a million pounds a day and I won't do it. It's as simple as that because that's not my priority list. Money isn't the priority. It yeah. is further down the list, definitely, but I'm missing out on my kids growing up for six months. Planet you on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. But again, that's my, that's my priority is, but that therefore dictates the success of everything that we do because you've clearly defined very personal goals that mean something to you. 
So by being selfish, you will actually be, be able to create a company that helps millions of people maybe instead of 10 or 40 or 50. It's okay working through the night and stuff and doing that noble thing of I work hard and like you need to work smart, not hard, because then you could help a thousand people and you're, the way you're doing things this noble way is worse than if you learn how to help more people. So you're actually helping more people the other way. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect. No, I love it. No, it's, you're absolutely right. And it's something that that's a lesson that needs to be learned quickly. Otherwise you become stagnant and you'll just take you longer to, to grow and, and progress. So no, thank you so much for today, Shane. I really appreciate it. Some no really, problem really great pearls of wisdom. And it's great to see everything that you're doing as well. Cause I see it day in, day out with great pizza photos. posts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great photos of food and everything. I've tried competing on the old food front and I just can't get the angles right of my photos. I'm awesome at Instagram filters. <laughs> that's where you're missing out. You need to get oh, better at Instagram. <laughs> Don't forget about actually producing good food. Just pile it on, slap it on, get your filters sorted. You'll be all that's, right. That's what that's what the integrity boils down to. <laughs> integrity. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. thanks very much mate and i really appreciate it no worries at all you know if you need anything any help at all or anybody watching this needs any help i'm literally only a mess away you know i reached out loads and loads when i first started out i literally got help from anybody i could and i understand that so more than happy to help anybody in any way we can Brilliant. thanks very much happy days um,